The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Get involved with Access Fort Wayne and make your own television programming. Call 421-1250 to find out more. Sandra Gonzalez, and I drive the bus. I'll take you where you need to go. School, shopping, work. Hi, Mrs. Williams. Every Friday, she goes to get her hair done. That's the Roberts, taking the grandkids to the zoo. So come on board. We're headed wherever life takes you. Bill Tro, and I work for a company called SRF, and we're helping uh, CityLink, we're helping NERC um, update the 10-year transit development plan or the 10-year transit plan. Um, also, it's Matt Runchuk, and he works for a company called CTG, and uh, we're working our way through the alphabet. And all Matt and I are, are the ones that are, are leading, putting together the various elements of the plan. Um, how many people were at the first round of public meetings? Okay. That, um, that, that remember there we had, we had gathered input on what do you think works well, what do you think needs some help, um, and tonight what we want to start talking about and start vetting are ideas that, that we have put together for um, making some changes to the existing uh, fixed route service, but then also looking towards the future, and in the, especially with, with this having the word plan in it, that we want to make sure we're, we're looking towards the future and what are some of those ideas that we could do to improve, enhance the service that is available. And um, as we, we did in the, the first round of meetings, we want to use, uh, I, I seem to just love little tape dots, so we're going to use a similar tape dot exercise that there are four um, potential directions that we could go relative to providing more service, and we want to gather your input as to which of those directions is the most important to you. Now, I'll point out that, that the directions that we've been talking about, they're all very uh, singular. It's either add Sunday service, or it's add more hours of service, or it's add more service area, and that ultimately what we'll probably end up doing is blending those together a little bit depending on um, whatever future funding scenario that we would end up looking at. So, but I think here what we want to do is make sure that on a, a relatively simple basis that we get some input as to what people believe is, is kind of the, the most important basic direction if we were to be, uh, had the ability to add more service. Okay, now when you say it, it, it's for the fixed route. Does that also include yes. access yes, as that, well? Yes, that access would have to, so if, if we were to add Sunday service, there would be access service. If we were to extend hours of service, there would be more hours of access service. If you were to provide uh, fixed route service into a new area of the, of the community, access would follow it. Ac and so access follows fixed route. Okay. Okay. I, I just wanted to kind of yep good clear, question clear very, that very good one so so um, the first we had covered this a little bit in the in the last um, in the first public meeting also but just to give you a little bit of, of background as to kind of how we put one of these together is that um, you know over the summer we spend a lot of time looking at and evaluating the, the current system I've got a couple of things on that that I'll go through with you because they help give us some direction as to what we, what we would want to be looking at relative to, to deciding and determining whether or not there should be some changes. Um, and that 
then we also have looked at, at the input that, that folks gave us on where we need more service or what, things like that. And that this is the stage that we're in now is, is what we call is the service plan. Where do we need to be looking at um, new service? Where do we need to be looking at some changes to the existing service that, that first of all has to address a need? And I'll go over what some of those might be real quick. And then the, the whole idea at the end is, is and I guess as we've been going through, we've been documenting different parts and then ultimately what we'll come up with is, is, a, is a cumulative plan. So when we're, we're that, that big first milestone is, is because it's, it is looking at the existing system and determining whether or not there is the need to make a change. And that we, we basically look at these, I'll call these the four tenets of, of deciding whether or not we need to, to make some adjustments to the existing system. The first thing is looking at the performance of the routes. Is, is a entire route operating well? Is it operating poorly? Um, and you know, do we have a, a good level of ridership for the cost that, that it takes? But then understanding that that you know not every route is going to be great. Not every route is going to be is going to be a poor performer. All of them are going to be made up of different segments, so different pieces of the street, different areas of town. Since you may have a uh, you know, a five mile route, there's going to be good pieces of that route, there's going to be poor pieces of that route, depending on where you're at. So we want to make sure we're also drilling down into the segments. We also want to look at are there are there gaps with in areas that could support transit and don't have any transit service today. And then the last one there is is the idea of are there are there locations in the community where there's there's redundancy in service and that are there particularly how we operate um, fixed route service in in Fort Wayne on a on a on essentially a pulse system so that um, you know you've, you've got like the five and the eight they, they run very close to each other even in some cases on the same street in the south side of town but they also run on the same schedule so that you're really not getting a whole lot of bang for your buck for having them operate very close to each other. So we're also identifying those places where we have redundancy that is actually hurting the performance of the system. We're hurting the performance of particular routes. So we're, we're looking at that whole idea of, of productivity of the, of the system. That what this map is showing us is the red lines, and, and what you can see here is, is the various colored lines are are depicting the each of the routes and the segments of the routes, and the different colors are measures of how well that route is actually performing. How many people are is it actually moving um, for the cost of that service? And the red lines are those areas where uh, the performance is, is, I would put it into the category of poor. Um, you're not really carrying that many people. You're not moving that many people from where they want to go or where they are to where they want to go. The orange is, is below the system average. Kind of the, 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 the yellow or the goldish color is, is about average for the system. And then the, the greens, green is good. Um, the greens are those areas where the, the, the system is performing very well, better than average or, or, or very well. And you can see that as we get to the fringe of the system is where things start to not perform as well, but then you also think about where service is provided, and as we start to get out to the, to the fringe of the community, it's more lower density single family residential. Every now and then there's a pocket of, of high density res residential or there's a pocket of, of retail or a pocket of employment, but the density drops and transit loves density. And uh, the higher the density is, the better off the transit is going to perform. But and then as we move to the center part of the, of the city, that we have more density, we have more diversity in the various land uses, that is where the system is gonna be performing the best. Um, so that the, this is a map that we look at 
to help us understand um, where service is is operating well and where it's it's not operating all that great. And that kind of a companion map to that one is 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 this one. And what this is showing us is in the, the dark the dark the the dark he the heavier uh, black lines are all of the existing uh, routes, and that the green areas are those areas that are are within walking distance of a route that have the density to support transit service. Okay, so that that they're they're higher density residential, they're higher density uh, commercial, they're higher density employment areas. And these, these gold areas are areas that are outside of an acceptable walk distance to transit that have a density that could support transit. And this is a very key map that you kind of combine with this one, is that when you're looking at the performance of particular segments, and then you go back and you look at the density along particular segments, you start to see a relationship that as we move out to the outer parts of the, the network, our, you can see that there's less green, there's less gold, there's, that, that means there's less density of development, which is not exactly a friend to, to transit service, and that those are areas where we have less productivity. And, you know, it, it, I, you know I keep talking and using words like productivity, like, but, you know, it, it, understanding that that uh, you know, we're not looking to turn a profit in transit, but we are looking to make sure that as many people that need service as, as we can, we, that we can get service to them. So we still wanna make sure we're focusing our limited public sector dollars in those areas that, that can support the service that we're, we're providing. But I think another thing that you can also see out of this is that, that you know, there's just these little pockets of, of the goal in that for the most part, we are providing service into those areas that can actually support transit. In the white, areas that are in white are lower density and of a, a density less than we would, we would say could really support transit service. So this one, this map really starts to, to give us some direction as to why some parts of some routes are operating better than other parts of other routes. This is a critical map that we look at as an analysis tool. Okay, any questions on that stuff? It's fascinating. Okay, so when we're looking at the idea of, of change, there's a couple of different worlds that we have to work in. And the first world is, is uh, the idea of there's probably not going to be in the relatively near future additional dollars to spend on transit. That if you look at the budget and has it, as it's been going over the course of the last four or five years, the budget has essentially been the same or actually decreasing a little bit. So that the idea there, that, so that as that, that the idea is if we want to make changes, we're, we essentially have a balloon that's only got so much air in it, and if we want more air over here, we gotta take air from this side. So that, so essentially, looking at changes to the system under a, a situation of no more money is, is looking at different trade-offs. Okay, if we want service over here, where are we gonna get the buses, the drivers, the people to provide the service over there? Well, we're gonna to have to take it from here, or we're gonna to have to take it from different hours of the day um, so that, that we can provide that, that new service that we would want. Um, and that this is the whole gamut kind of, of those trade-offs that we need to be considering as we're looking at, at changes. So the, the first thing that we're, we're looking at is, is what we call as a cost neutral or no new cost um, uh, transit network uh, concept. And here, what we're trying to do when we look at the existing system is, is we want to try to remove loops if we can. That the loop, uh, a, a loop in a transit system is relatively inefficient. Um, sometimes it's difficult to understand. Um, and that we also then want to look at when we're, when we're looking at parallel routes, we want them spaced somewhere between a quarter and a half a mile if we could even um, have them that dense. But the idea there is, is there are some 
uh, corridors where there's more density in service than that. And that service in a community like Fort Wayne is going to essentially cannibalize each other. Um, we also want to, in those unproductive areas, we want to look at the idea of, of changing some service there. Um, and is it a situation of finding a new, new street network or new streets to run um, the service on in that same area where we can find some more density? Or is it truncating some routes and, and putting that service somewhere else? And then the last one is, is reducing the redundancy. Um, okay, so these two maps are showing you, this is the proposed concept that, that we put together for review, that this is not something that's, that, that we're saying tonight that we're gonna implement, but this is a concept that we're looking at to, um, as, as a cost revenue alternative to this network over here, which um, is a combination of the existing routes and the new routes. And the purpose there is to show you exactly where those changes are. So the, all of the, the, black, the black lines on this one are the existing routes and then the colored routes are that network over there so you can start to see here in the southeast part of town is that we have a much, many more of the routes are north south routes and that those east west segments have been removed and the idea here is that we believe that we can create enough north south density of the routes so that we can essentially serve most of those people that are maybe getting on going east and west, but they're essentially going east and west for a few blocks and then getting back into a north south route because everything goes into downtown. Most of everything goes into downtown. Um, and so that, in that, uh, you know, so that what the purpose of this one is, then you can see if there's just a black line. That, that those are, are parts of the existing network that we're suggesting um, get removed. And most of those are pieces that were poor uh, performers in the existing system. Okay? So one of the biggest questions we always run into then is, well, what does that mean to me? And what this map is showing is that the, the black lines underneath are the, the concept that we're, we're proposing. And that each of the, the different red circles are the level of activity, the number of people getting on or getting off um, at each of the bus stops today. It's back in, in uh, March, when we did the, the onboard survey, if anybody was riding the bus, that you may have, have gotten a survey to complete, but at the same time, we were counting um, where people were getting on, where people were getting off, and these circles then all depict where people were getting on and where they were getting off. Bigger circle means more people over the, the course of the day. Smaller circles, less people. So what, we're, so what this is showing in the black lines again is the proposed concept. And then, you, and then the red dots are the existing activity. And then this little buffer, or the, the, the peach, or the, the pink color, is um, about a three-eighths of a mile walk distance, which we're saying is about the maximum acceptable walk distance. And the purpose there is to, to, to do an analysis of, well, how many of the existing users would we still cover within an acceptable walk distance with this new concept? So you can see that here in the far southeast part of town, there's a, a few um, dots that aren't covered. We have some others up here in the, in the Northwest. This is one that I think you probably need to look at a little bit closer. Um, and then there's a, but for the most part, you see that, that, that those areas that, that have service today that wouldn't have service in the future, that they're relatively limited, relatively low current activity locations. Does this one, this one make sense to folks? Okay, so as we're also making, looking at changes, that we're also squeezing some hours of service out of the system. And what, that, what, what this map over here is showing is the existing route structure, and it's showing where we have 60-minute routes, 
where we have 30 minute routes. And you can see that there are the, the 30 minute routes are kind of along the spine, the cold water um, down to, to, to Fayette, Fairfield, that spine through the middle part of town. And this is, this is the proposed concept where we still have that 30 minute service on the spine on the north-south direction, but then we've also been able to find enough hours to provide some east-west 30 minute service also. So to me, that that, that starts to, to be critical in that you're, you're building then uh, a little bit more accessibility, a little bit more coverage of that 30 minute service relative to the 60 minute and that, that, and that this network is about the same cost as that network. It's actually a little bit of cost savings. Okay? So are you saying that there's going to be more buses running in the 30 minute segment with the plan that you're proposing versus the 60 minutes? Yes. You would, you would have, so at, on 30 minutes, you'd have, you see a bus every 30 minutes. On the 60 minute segments, you would only see a bus every hour. So it, you'd have better accessibility. So if, say that you, uh, the story I told this morning is, is that if you needed to be work at, at 8 o'clock in the morning, you missed, and, and, it, and say your, your bus came by at 7.30, oops, I missed it. Well, today, you're going to be you're going to be at least an hour late. But in, in, in the network here, if we can get more people access to 30-minute routes, well, you're only going to be 30 minutes late. And you're still going to be late, but you're only going to be 30 minutes late, as opposed to an hour. So th this one gets us a little bit more coverage of, of more frequent service. Okay. So, that, that's kind of, this is our, okay, if we don't have any more money. This is a suggestion that, that we're starting to talk with, with CityLink about, we're starting to talk to the city about, we're starting to talk about to with other decision makers, we're, we're now we're starting to talk to the public about. But we also want to make sure that we're thinking and planning for um, the possibility of improving the system by expanding the number of dollars that we have to spend on transit. So that, in that, I, did this, I talked about this a little bit earlier, but there are essentially four directions that we see, is that we can try to add more service area, in, you know, going out, um, you know, that here our service area comes down to, well, to the south there, but can we provide more service further out? Can we provide service into some of those, those wedges that don't have any service today? Plus, does it make sense to do that? Um, so that would be the idea of creating additional coverage. We could add to the frequency, so we could create more 30-minute routes where today, or even in, that, even in, in this scenario that we have 60-minute um, routes, can we create more 30-minute routes? Um, can we provide service later into the evening during the week and on, on Saturdays? And or can we provide Sunday service? So the combination that it, when we're looking at these, what, what we would need to be able to do is find at least 10% more um, funding for transit service than we're seeing today. Um, and that if we did that, we could do any one of these things um, that, that we're, we're showing here. So that the idea of saying, well, I want it all, that's probably not a, a reasonable scenario because you would have to increase transit funding by 40 or 50 percent over what we're seeing today. And that's, that's going to be a stretch unless a lot of the funding rules that we have change. And whether, and, and whether or not the, the community would, would support that. Okay? So when we start to, and then this leads us to the exercise that we want to do, is, is that, you know, I had these, these four basic ideas, 
in that we've, we've got uh, maps in the back that, that mirror exactly what this is, and that everybody is going to get four tape dots from red, yellow, blue, and green. And what I would want you to do is, is go to each of the maps, and there's, there's four maps, or I guess a combination of four halves of a map, um, and that one map has uh, the, the label up here is Add Sunday Fixed Route and Paratransit Service. That would be one of those four directions that we could go. And this, this, this would, and if this is your your most important idea, I would or I, option, I would want you to put the your red dot on that one. Um, and then we've got another map that would that is add frequency. And what we're saying is that if we could get 10% more, that um, we could add some more frequency on two additional routes. And what we're just suggesting is one that goes up to the northwest, one that goes up to the northeast. So then we're getting the kind of the X plus kind of filling in some of the, the gaps in those X's. Um, and then the third option would be to extend the, the weekday and Saturday hours of service. In here, what I, if I remember right, that it would be three additional hours of service that we could get um, on Saturdays and Sunday, or Saturdays and weekdays, and that would include both fixed route and access service. And then the fourth one, and this is kind of the, the two-step process on this one, is, is this one is extending service into those unserved areas um, relative to today. So this one, I've got two things I'm going to ask you that what you use the one of the four dots that you have on the priority or your preference of doing this. Plus, I've got some smaller dots, and you can see I've kind of created these little I don't know, I'll call them places. And what, what I would want you to do is place the smaller dot. I, I'm going to give you three of those. Place those dots in the wedge of where you think we should be providing service. Um, if you were to extend it into those those areas that are gaps today, okay. Any questions? Okay. So that that was the fun part. Now there's the other side of it, and this is that I, I talked about at the beginning that the, the the blue line here shows the annual dollars that are spent. On, on transit in Fort Wayne. And you can see here is that actually over the last four years, the number is actually, the dollars have actually been going down. And you think about your household in, over the last four years. Um, well, okay, so over the last four years, gas has gotten a little cheaper maybe, but you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much stayed stable or now it's going back up. Um, hopefully your wages have gone up a little bit. Um, uh, some of your other costs have gone up a little bit, and and the City Link as a as a public business has seen the same thing with labor and fuel and vehicles. Um, all of those costs have been going up, but the dollars that they've had available to spend have so that just makes budgets tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, and it, when, when you see it occurring over that many years. You start to ask yourself, well, if this doesn't change, well, we're at a tipping point of needing to make some hard decisions of not thinking about expanding service, but maybe thinking about even contracting service. And that what I wanted to just make sure that, that you, everybody understood is that even with a, you know, here what we would be talking about is a 10% increase. But even if we start talking about a 5% de decrease in the level of funding that there is, that we would have to, if, if there's a 5%, you'd have to start thinking about cutting a route. And then you think about there's really not that many routes out there in the first place, but you would have to start thinking about cutting a route. Or you would have to start thinking about cutting an hour of service out of the whole system on a daily basis. Or you would have to start thinking about taking one of those relatively small number of 30-minute routes and turning it into a 60-minute route. So that, that, that is a, a relatively small decrease in funding that has, to me, some very big 
negative um, uh, outcomes relative to service. But even if, it, so that, you know, where we're talking about a 10% increase allows us to add Sunday service, that same 10% looking at it on a decrease results in, the, in, in bringing, cutting Saturday service into the realm of a conversation of, well, geez, our budget keeps going down, our costs keep going up. So if that changes by about a million dollars a year, that you may start to think about needing to cut Saturday service, or you gotta take two routes and turn them into 60 minute routes, or you have to take two hours a day out of service, or you have to just eliminate two routes, and you start to see those are very significant changes on, I'll say, a seemingly small, um, uh, I guess, uh, added um, element on, on funding or, or a restriction on, on funding. So, you know, that, that as we're, we're hoping that in this planning process we can look at, at improving service, we also have to be cognizant that we need to have champions of uh, the funding that goes into transit, which really means you also have to have a good story of the benefit that you get out of transit, or there could be some very significant negative ramifications that we're going to have to be addressing in the in the in the future. Okay, so I probably shouldn't have ended it on that downer, but um, <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> the heroin died, but um, but I guess just let letting you. We can we can go to the to the boards and if you need some more explanation of, of what each of them is, um, we have one more public meeting um, tomorrow uh, at uh, in City Link uh, Central Station. We had our, our first one this afternoon. It was cozy. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'm assuming we'll be just as cozy. Um, and then we have this spacious room here compared to where we were um, in the meeting. So. Um, Anybody have any questions? Anything you want to discuss? I do. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm not from Fort Wayne, but um, I want to talk about the street crossings for like blind and visually impaired people. Are you guys doing anything about that? Like trying to like make that accessible for us? You mean the city of Fort Wayne? Yeah. Um, how about if I say, put it on a comment, and we'll make sure it gets passed along. One of, one of the things that we do, hi, I'm Betsy from CityLink. Um, one of the things that we try to do um, is remind the city that when people ride the bus, they have, oftentimes are crossing the street in order to get the bus stops. So we try to make sure that bus stops are at safe intersections and we, are, we strongly advocate for the city to put um, good signals up at as many intersections as they can in order to make that safe. The other thing that we can do at CityLink is we have a policy that people are allowed to ride all the way around on the same route in order to get to the side of the street that they need to be on so that you wouldn't have to cross the street. So when you get on the bus, you can cross. You can get on the bus on the side of the street that is you know, easiest for you. And then when you're getting off the bus, you can ride if you have time. The service all the way around to the other, you know, you know, back to that same point, so that you don't have to cross the street. Does that make sense? So like if your turnstone is a really good example of a really bad intersection. Yeah. So I mean, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Um, literally, uh, and and so one of the other things that we have done is we have been working with Turnstone to try and make our Route 8 go the other way around the circle that we use in order to, to uh, cover this area so that you don't have to cross the street to get here. Um, and so we have um, every, our half hour bus, our 30 minute bus, um, does that. And um, and then and then uh, you know sometimes people just have to take access in order to not have to cross the street. So we have um, you know, our, our door to door service that will pick people up. Um, also, we've made our Route 21 service, our flex route service, um, come here uh, to help with that Route 8 situation too. So you can flex over here as well. So 
Church sounds like one of the hardest places for us to serve, but we'll try. Can I ask a question? What kind of accommodations were you thinking of when you were talking about crossing the street? Do you, talk, do you want a chirp? Yeah. Signal? Is that what you're asking about? Yes, or are you looking, exactly. We have the truncated domes at most of our crossings, but are you looking for a chirp signal? Yeah, exactly. Because okay. in New York, they have a lot of those. Of the chirp signals, yeah. right. And I will ask about planning for changing out. I know at one point we were just trying to get to the signals that were the countdown signals. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're looking at chirp signals. But um, I, I mean, I, we can ask the right of way department if they have plans to change out or to accommodate those signals yes. to the church. Sharice, the person who's talking now is with the city of Fort Wayne, so you, you asked it at a good time. Well, not that I have your answer, but no, I mean, she's, <laughs> a good, she's a good city advocate. She will, she will make sure that you're by the right person. Yeah, I think that's all. But thank you for asking. I will, I will ask about that. You have a question? Okay. Anybody else? On that Sunday service, if that does happen, what is the idea of our Sunday? Why is what? Well, what is the idea of hours for Saturday? I meant Sunday. How many hours could we run on Sunday? Oh, that's a good uh, question. Yeah, we, we were talking about the same hours as, as currently on Saturday. 10 to 12 yeah. hours. So it would be like 7 30. On Saturday service, it's seven thirty in the morning to like six thirty at night. Yeah. Right so, now. Yeah, yeah. It would be. We're only looking at, at, at a block of dollars and what hours you get, and the number of hours. You right. Get. So that we, was the estimate. Yeah. That's what they were guessing. In, in, in some places, kind of slide that around a little bit since you know you, you don't necessarily have um, you know the, the the jobs that start real early on the Sunday. So maybe you kind of push that back an hour, and then that gives you the ability to have an extra hour and later than than maybe you would on Saturday in this case. But you can slide that around to adjust your well, based on, on what you think is the yeah. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Betsy. <laughs> I was talking to Matt because he, you, you guys must go, go to the same place. There's lots of churches. I think we are known as a city of churches. I, I could be wrong. I think you're right. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Then I'll, if, if you want to, all of the, the four boards that we need are, the three boards that we need are back in the corner here. We can kind of move some chairs out. Yeah, and then you can just, you know, as you were Catholic, it's just communion. You yep. take off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my mother hates me more. Right. <laughs>